Welcome to Electron Online, and now the final stage of a star's life is the white dwarf stage. That's when all that's left of the star is the very core of the star that has been collapsing since the fusion process has ended and that the repulsive force of the electrons have stopped any further collapse. So now we have a white dwarf star, which is basically a ball of carbon, very, very hot carbon at very high temperatures. Remember, when the, the star finally reaches its end stage and the outer layers blow away, at that point, the core temperature is over 100 million degrees Kelvin. But over time, slowly the core will, will cool down and the temperatures will slowly decrease. Nevertheless, the surface temperature of these, of these white dwarf stars is still in the hundreds of thousands or millions of degrees, putting out enormous quantities of UV radiation. How big are these? Now, what's left of the core of the star, it has not collapsed to the size of a, of a regular planet like the Earth. For example, the diameter of a typical white dwarf is no bigger than the size of the Earth. And yet, it contains the mass of hundreds of thousands of, well, not necessarily hundreds of thousands, but tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of times the mass of the Earth. Typically speaking, the density of white dwarf material is so dense that if you take one spoonful of material off the surface, it would have the mass of an elephant on the Earth. Typically speaking, the density of a white dwarf is roughly 75,000 times the density of the Earth. Enormously dense material packed together, almost pure carbon. Carbon is a very plentiful material in the universe because it's being generated by all the stars that reach their red giant stage. Their whole core will fill with carbon, and when the rest of the star blows away, with the planetary nebulas disappearing, all that's left of the star is the center of the star, the core of the star, which is which is just a ball of very hot carbon. Now, how big can that white dwarf be? Well, a very smart astronomer named Chandrasekhar has actually calculated that the maximum mass of the star is 1.4 times the mass of the sun. So the maximum mass that a white dwarf can have is equal to 1.4 times the mass of the sun. What happens when it's bigger than 1.4 times the mass of the sun? And that's what happens to these very large stars. A very large star ends up in a white dwarf stage, but somehow the mass of that white dwarf stage, the rest, of the core of the star that's, that's remaining, if that exceeds 1.4 times the mass of our current sun, well, the balance between the gravitational forces pushing the core ever so tight and the repulsive force of the electrons pushing back, that balance will be overcome by the gravitational forces. It will overcome the repulsive forces of the electrons. It will squeeze the white dwarf even tighter. So as long as the mass does not exceed 1.4 times the mass of the sun, that will not happen. And so the white dwarfs, typically for most stars, especially like our sun, which only starts with one times the mass of the sun, it could never have a, a white dwarf remnant that is bigger than that. So therefore, most white dwarfs will always remain as white dwarfs in the universe and slowly over the billions of years cool down. Where do white dwarfs appear in the HR diagram? Well, down here because they're not very luminous. They're very hot, but they're not very luminous because they're so small. The surface area of these white dwarfs are so tiny. Here you can take a look at it. That is a white dwarf remnant with the outer layers, the planet nebula, slowly fading away in the ring nebula. So you can see these are very, very small objects, very hot on the surface, but very small, and they're not very luminous. That's why they appear so low on the HR diagram. And of course, over time, as they cool down and they give off less and less energy, they will slowly move to the right on the HR diagram. Of course, in the entire history of the universe, the 13 points seven, eight billion years that the universe is old and that stars have been in existence that have slowly turned into white dwarfs, none of them have gotten to the point where they're no longer visible because it takes so many billions of years for them to cool down. So all the white dwarfs that have ever been formed in the universe are still there visible to us, just hard to find because they're so tiny and so small. Now, let's see here, since this is a very special limit, let's write down the name of that limit. This is known as the Chandrasekhar limit and that is the ultimate size limit for any white dwarf, which is 1.4 times the mass of the sun. And that's where all the stars that we know of, about 99.9% .9 of all the stars, with a very small percentage of stars that do not go to this final end stage, they will all become white dwarfs and end up their life like that, a small little balls of very hot carbon material just floating around in space. And of course, that carbon material cannot make it to the Earth.
there is something that happens that very small percentage of really big stars that do not end up in a white dwarf stage that somehow deposit all that carbon material into the universe to be reused and recycled in the formation of new stars and the formation of new planetary systems like the Earth. And that's where our carbon came from, from the center of those stars that somehow was recycled through a very explosive event that we'll talk about in a later video. See you then.